Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Clark, and welcome to, oh, goodness, Faith Fridays. I'm so excited. Every week, I get to interview the coolest people I, that I know. I am so blessed. And I'm interviewing people who are walking by faith, not sight. Those who are just spurring me on as I'm just walking forward, just trusting God in that obedience, and they're doing the same thing. So I, today, get to share with you and every one of my dear, dear friends. I think We've been friends for over 28 years. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm dating myself, but this is my dear, dear friend, Ayana Nameas. So, Ayana, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Kim, and <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thanks for inviting me on. Oh, you kidding? It's my pleasure. You, uh, What you're doing and how God has used you, it's just been such a blessing and just an inspiration to me. So share with me a little bit about your Zimbabwe farm project, all the great things that God's just doing through you as you're just walking by faith through obedience. So the project started um, when my dad died. So he died in 2015 and we have been estranged for pretty much almost as long as we've been friends. And we went there, my sister and I, uh, to, to bury him and to settle his uh, estate. And it was really heartbreaking when I got there and I found that that people didn't even know that I existed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very, you know, traumatic. So I had to have a lot of healing from that. But it ended up that I have a brother and a sister, as you well know, and it ended up that they didn't want to have anything to do with the property. And I have a love, a heart for Africa. And I just heard from God to turn it into a project that would benefit the people in the community. And it would also be a way to honor my dad's legacy of Pan-Africanism and helping um, Africans to realize self-sufficiency and, and pride, being proud of their efforts instead of being beholden to the whole donor dependency model. I knew nothing about farming and uh, God really increased. Not only did he increase this in terms of crop and and um, the amount of people that it benefits as you said it's a micro project it's a you know it was a lean startup but he put people in my life for every step of the way because like I said I knew nothing about farming but I heard to start this project and um, I I don't know. I, I can only to God be the glory. I, I really can't say that I did anything except be used by him and be obedient. And in the beginning, as you well know, every startup took a lot of money. And the most amazing thing, and you know this, is I was an English lit major. And unlike you, your professor and all of this, I was an English lit major. And I just didn't have any of those types of skills, but God had me, and we didn't get a chance to talk about this, but my first job, he, he, he had someone come in and mentor me. And mm -hmm. that's how I ended up and fought for me to get my PMP certification. Mm -hmm. That PMP certification took the place of the, ed the technical education formal education that I did not have. Wow. That was what enabled me to get into the IT industry. And then I was able to start my own business. And the money that I was making from that is what enabled me to do this. That's all God. It started, I, how did I know? I mean, Way before my dad died, my dad died in 2015. I started work at, in 2008, but he knew from that time that I would need to have somebody fight for me and put that person in place. Then I got my PMP and that allowed me to make the money to pour into this project, to start it, to get it up off the ground, but it was all God. That's so amazing because four years ago, you inherited four and a half acres in Zimbabwe and your passion was really empowering women and empowering children and allowing them to be 
because most farming in Zimbabwe in that area is sustenance farming, but then in, enabling it to be a self-sustaining farm. And then, but you, I mean, there's so many incredible things that you've done. Share us a little bit about the, the irrigation system, the boreholes, the, I, I can't even go on. I don't want to steal your thunder. So share with us a little bit about how, because some people can say, oh, well, you heard from God, like the burning bush and everything's so wonderful and it's rainbow unicorns and cupcakes. And I, I've, I, I'm kind of, I'm right here on the path with you. And I know that even though we hear from God and we're moving ahead in obedience, we're walking by faith, not sight. It's, there's still some obstacles. There's still some crazy things. There's amazing God kisses. So share with us some of those obstacles and those times of just being in awe of God. So um, I would have to say that there, every day with regard to the Zimbabwe Farm Project, I'm always in awe of the things that he's doing. But to answer your question in the beginning, and this video is posted on the Facebook page, um, and on our Facebook page, in the beginning, there was nothing. Isn't that so, God? There was nothing. I mean, I, I had this huge piece of property. I mean, we raised everything to the ground to make it fresh. And also because that's how God is. When he wants to do a thing, he wants nothing there. No one can get the credit but him. Mm. And my dad had used um, a wind pump. Mm. on the property so that's what he used for irrigation was a wind pump but like so much of the stuff on the property he had let it fall into disrepair so it didn't work i knew nothing about wind pumps or boreholes i didn't even know what a borehole was <laughs> and i was like well if we're gonna do something with the land we have to have water we have to have irrigation and the property is at a really steep downward incline so the borehole literally is maybe at about a 35 percent okay um incline from the top of the property to the borehole so that takes a lot of energy to pump the water up right. to the top where the fields are and um this man that lived across the street from my dad um he wanted to see what he could get because it was like, oh, the guy died. Let me see what mm -hmm. I can get. But he right. knew someone that could repair the windmill, the huh. wind. And he brought in a um, master uh, plumber, and he brought in um, people to repair the the wind mains and the right. and everything. And I didn't know how to do it at all and they fixed this and they got the water pumping Amen. but it wasn't strong enough i mean it wasn't it, it was very weak but it was clean and that was a real blessing the borehole with the water was clean there was no sand or buildup in it no sediment so then the next miracle was that the man that i work for that got i work uh, on contract but the man that he put me in touch, had me work for was an engineer. And I told him about the Zimbabwe Farm Project. And I told him about the culture. You know about the culture, mm -hmm. how I can get things done as a woman, but to get big, hard things done, you need to have a man uh, interfacing. Mm -hmm. you know? Not that they won't do it, but when a man is there, mm -hmm. it gets done to the right way or mm -hmm. to the highest expectations. So... He said, oh, I love that project. I'm amazed that you're doing it. What can I do to help? And I said, they have this, we have this windmill on the property, wind pump, and I don't know what to do. And I know we need water. And he was like, okay, well, let me go. Would you like me to come with you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'm going to, I'll come with you and I'll see what is it. And he designed the entire irrigation system and he went with them to the marketplace. He properly saw, I didn't know about power and how deep the borehole needed to be. He designed the entire irrigation system. He got the right side with the, the help of these, these local men. And 
and got the proper helped me and advised me on the size of the tanks that I needed and where they were to be placed. It was amazing. It, that was amazing because water is life giving. And that I would have to say was one of the major turning points when that, when the water and that whole thing was put in place, then the next steps could happen. So. Isn't that true? Because God doesn't always call the equipped. I'm sorry, he, he, he equips the call. He doesn't call the equipped. And we kind of take those steps of faith, of walking by faith and not sight. And we're kind of like, okay, God, I, I just trust you. And then he brings it. He's like, great. Because then we can't take the glory. Right. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, I know nothing. Yeah, no, this is all God. It's all him. So and that's what you're saying. It's like, I knew nothing about farming inherited this land. I had this passion for Africa, this passion for women. And now you've created this micro enterprise of this self-sustaining farm that sells. Give us some ideas, like how many uh, tons of produce does this farm now produce? Well, we, we've had, and it's on my website, so I don't have it up in front of me right now, but you know, it's definitely like we've had about six tons of, of corn you know, over planting seasons, uh, about seven tons of potatoes. Um, so, I mean, it's, and the crops that we, and not to mention the fact that we have orchards there. So we have um, lemons, limes, macadamias, avocados, pecans. And, um, but it's producing like tons of crops, uh, cash crops that, mm -hmm they use in the Zimbabwean diet. Um, things like rape, you know, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, rape, which is like collards and, mm -hmm. um, and, and things of that nature. So in order to increase the viability of the project, we moved into macadamia farming because that's what a lot of um, subsistence farmers in mm -hmm. Africa are now moving towards or mm -hmm. macadamias because mm -hmm. They're um, easy to, you know, grow and their value um, on the worldwide market, as anybody can tell you who goes to the store, it's, it's really high. Absolutely. And, but it's, it's a long, that's a long-term um, investment and venture. So the people are still being hired. The women are being hired to, you know, tend the, the, the mm -hmm. orchard, but they're little things, they're little teeny seedlings, but they're, they're coming. But the rest of the property is still being used for, um, for farming. And we also have uh, poultry and they're doing traditional poultry farming. So it's not a big commercial thing and right. they use the traditional lean to, and the chickens are truly free range. <laughs> <laughs> free, free, range, free range chickens, free range organic. Um, <laughs> we grew sunflower seeds this year for the right. sunflowers this, this year for the first time, and we're using that to mix with the chicken mash. So everything is even the stalks after the women harvest the corn the stalks are taken by another woman in the community and she uses them to feed her goats the chicken yeah so it's like nothing is wasted mm -hmm. and nothing is wasted and as i was sharing with you earlier you know um economically Zimbabwe is going through some challenging times right now, mm -hmm. but it's not like what's portrayed in the news. It's not that bad, but there are a lot of people that live that are homeless there, right. not homeless. Like we think of in America, but you know, they're like living in the woods, you know, and they just, if they only could have employment. Right. And, and it's not a lot. It's like these women. And that's one of my, you know, that's one of the only things that I'm pretty firm on. If a woman can do the work, then I want them to hire mm -hmm. women to do the right. work. And at $5 a day for back breaking labor, mm -hmm. but that $5 can be used to feed their children. So it makes a, a big difference. And, um, and, and so they can, I manage it, but really, they're the ones right. that that do everything on a day-to-day -day basis 
and um, they use the proceeds from the sales to reinvest and to hire people and to make a difference, a mm -hmm. positive difference. Yeah. And how encouraging that is for you. I mean, just to see, and we've talked a little about this, like the healing that happened, how God used that land that yeah. you had that estranged relationship with your father to bless so many people to create this micro enterprise of farming and produce to to create a business for some of these so many women. I mean, that's just so encouraging. I, I don't know, it just makes my heart sore that. You yeah, know, but God, but God, but God, you know, and for a man who didn't really like women, you know, <laughs> it was like he didn't really, you know, I mean, it, it, he just he, he had kind of disdain for women, or what many people think of traditionally in traditional societies. I mean, he was Muslim, mm -hmm. so the second class citizen and role for women, and for you know, God to have used me as a vehicle to benefit women. And uh, it's, 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 it's amazing, but it's not just women because the farm next to us, um, she truly has a um, nonprofit that only focuses on women, right. women and girls, women who were, you know, were orphaned, because mm -hmm. of HIV or whatever. So she, that is her focus. And she mm -hmm. does that really well. Beautiful farm. But mine is focused on women, but it's focused on the family. Because right. families are not just women. When a woman works and makes money, the whole family benefits. Okay. But you have to allow the man, the head of the household, to feel good, to have yeah. self-worth. And so that's why the project is managed by the men but their wives are all there their wives work there mm -hmm. you know and they hire women from the community to do the work that um that they can do that's you know heavy lifting heavy harvesting they don't do that mm -hmm. the corn the rape the carrots uh the tomatoes all of that stuff that's done by the women that's yeah, awesome all do this, yeah how many um, people does your that the Zimbabwe Farm Project employ or support? It will be support because they're not employees. Mm -hmm. they, they they're day laborers. What we okay. would call here day laborers. Sure. Um, and I would say over the life of the project, maybe three four hundred people. <sighs> Yeah, you know, because it's not always the same people. It's based on availability. And, you know, it's like one day you could have 10 women, you know, and then another time you could have five and the men. It's just, so it's just based on availability. But over the life of the project, I would have to say about that. And then we like to, like the women, the, uh, where we got our submersible pump, that was a woman-owned business that sold us the submersible pump. And my lawyer, she's a woman, you know, and uh, she's lived in Zimbabwe. I mean, she was married mm -hmm. to a Zimbabwe and lives, she's American, but so she's, you know, I try every way possible to interact, to empower and mm -hmm. to uplift women um, throughout this process, yeah. But three to 400 people, on just that one step of obedience going, yeah. I mean, you could have built a house there and used that as a, a vacation home or somewhere to retire, but instead you're like, you know what? I, I'm going to make a change mm -hmm. for this country for good, for so many lives. And we were talking about this earlier. What is the generational effect of those three to 400 people who would not have had jobs had you not been obedient, had you not been walking by faith? but by sight, instead of by sight saying, you know, I'm just going to take care of me. Instead of like, oh, I, I have this. And I love when you said it. I, I just feel like I have to do this. There's no, I, uh, and talk a little bit about that, that calling you felt that the Lord is really imparted upon you for this initiative. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, because I wasn't a particularly spiritual person i think spiritual and religion are two different things so religiosity is one thing so but when i heard and i'm not comparing myself to saul of tarsus but i had this moment where i transitioned from 
it's all about me to, you know, you have to do something for other people mm -hmm. and I'm going to use you if you will let me. And, and you know, when you know you have to do something, even when everybody else and, you know, and <laughs> literally people told me, and they tell me to this day, like you said, it's not easy. I tell people all the time, it is not easy. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I personally am financially struggling trying to, you know, mm -hmm. support this, you know, now to, to make sure that the big investments continue to happen. Mm -hmm. They're able to, to make a living, but there's some big investments that still need to happen. So I'm, you know, it's not an easy walk. And so when people say, I don't understand why you're doing this, this just doesn't even make sense. Why do you, I don't know. My answer is, I don't know. I just know I have to. I don't, I, some people that don't understand, I just say, I know I have to. Other people I say, because God told me to. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what this looks like. I don't know why he's doing this. I don't know why he used me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he had to take little old me that knew nothing about farming, who had a dad that didn't acknowledge her existence and for all intents and purposes didn't love me. And that is a single mom struggling all of this so that he could say, I could take no credit because I can take no credit. <laughs> but look at what he is doing. The people mm -hmm. that, that he has helped, you know, and it's not big. You know, I think that's something, one of the things that I like to say all the time, I quote Mahatma Gandhi with, you know, be the change you wish to see in the world, you know? And I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money and then I'm going to do it. Exactly. Well, I'm going to do look like this and it's going to be big, but sometimes it doesn't have to be big. And you know, I, a lot of times things start small and God can increase. So this isn't a big project. We don't have overhead and this, but we are helping people hundreds of people and one thing it's important to note is that you manage all this from the washington dc area so you're managing this zimbabwe project raising funds for this project in the united states as you're working living in the states through um whatsapp through, i mean it just, through WhatsApp, yeah but on a daily basis yeah it's just amazing like it's just again but god is what i come away from and i i mean i'm just so encouraged for you and i just feel like the Lord would say, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. As you're walking in obedience, giving him all the glory going, uh, you know, I'm using this land to help others. Uh, to help others, you know, uh, and it, not being, and even, even when I heard to do the macadamia orchard, you know, that's really a commitment. Once you plant 500 trees on a 4.5 acre, I mean, that's pretty much it. You're not building any kind of vacation home there ever again. Yeah, that's your that was like an all in commitment wow. that I heard to do. And, and that doesn't mean I don't want to live. I would love to live in Zimbabwe, but I just believe that if that's what God wants, he'll provide me with a house, but mm -hmm. that's not what that land is for. That mm -hmm. land is for mm -hmm. what he wants to do and in increasing provision in the lives of the people that live in that community because it's not a poor community so I don't want people to think that mm -hmm. people have it it's a very wealthy community it's just that the people who work on the farms or the people who are unemployed or the domestics mm -hmm. as they call them they live in the woods a lot of them and, and on the reserves and on the yeah on the reserves, that's yeah. important that you do have this dichotomy of the uh, of, of some wealth but also some some poverty as well that they need this so how, so how encouraging that god's using your just one step of obedience your one just taking because faith is sure of what we hope for certain we do not see just taking that step i mean it's just it's, and just, it's something that can be seen you know yeah. it's one thing to tell a story but a picture or a video is worth a thousand words. And to see 
the land in the beginning when I was first mm -hmm. serving where there was nothing and to see what it looks like season after season when it's full of bountiful crops, mm -hmm. you know, and it may not be the prettiest farm, but it doesn't have to be pretty. It has to produce and give jobs and provide opportunities, you know, and that is so in encouraging. The whole story is mm -hmm. about birth and rebirth and transition and the fact that people can be empowered. That was my other big thing. I wanted a, a model where people were not donor dependent. I didn't want to do mm -hmm. a, yeah. a charity organization that kept people as beggars. People mm -hmm. need to be, when we are self-sufficient and self-sustaining, we can give to others. Exactly, exactly. And I just think of the 30 years that land was dormant, getting more and more fertile. Yeah. All that time for such a time as this. For How? such a time. Yeah. Because How my dad lived there and he farmed it by himself because, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't want to have anybody there, blah, blah, blah. So he farmed it by himself. Mm -hmm. But now you've moved from one man farming by himself to now you have tractors tilling these rich red soils and yeah, you know planting and women it's, it's amazing it's a big it's it's amazing and then when we got the water and then we got the water tanks because you know we have ten thousand liters of water tanks and then we have one for the poultry for the chickens and you know 500 liters for that and all of that is through the wells through the borehole you know how cool is that how cool. I mean, really, I, I just, I'm amazed. I tell this story and because I, I just want to show what God can do. You know, he, he did this and to be able to manage. I think that's the thing that mm -hmm. really blows a lot of people's mind is like, how do you manage something like that from tens of thousands of miles away? And that, you know, you were talking about the small miracles. That, Kim, as you well know, is a miracle. It's hard enough to manage people when they're in your office. <laughs> <laughs> or your family. <laughs> your family, much less via WhatsApp, you know. But God put the people in place because you, it doesn't matter what tools you have if the people don't have a heart to do the right mm -hmm. thing. Right. There's nothing that I could do to make them mm. do that, but that they are invested and they have their own hearing from God. Amen. You know? And the ones we were talking about that, you know, people come on. It's like people, God has put people in place in the project for every step of the way, for everything that needed to be done. And they're there for a season or for a project. And then, you know, something, because this is just human beings, something happens to make the, everybody know, okay, this season has come to an end. This right. is it. But what he wanted, what he, God, wanted to have done was completed, you know? And so having these people have that God center mm -hmm. makes this happen. I mean, my operations manager, his name is Richard Washiri. Richard, I talk to him every day, every day. Mm. This is what happened. That's where I get all these videos from that I'm able to upload on Facebook. This yeah. is what happened, madam. This is, and because he's been such a good and faithful servant, Richard, you know, I'm giving him a, I had to start a company in Zimbabwe because you have to have, you know, a company to be able to sell. Yeah. And I'm giving him um, stock ownership in that company because awesome. he, and, and that's something he can pass on to his, awesome. you know, your dad went from living in the woods to being a business owner wow. because I started the business, but I don't have any need or benefit for that business right now, today, because that's not what God 
told me, but that had to be in place. But for Richard and his family, that's a legacy. And it's 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 changing the generational trajectory of his entire uh, of generations to come. I mean, for it's it's just amazing to see that there's just one act of walking by faith and not sight. Mm -hmm. and not going yeah the natural this doesn't look really smart and but i'm trusting god and god's like yeah just step out in faith just be faith is sure we hope for certainly we do not see and then he'll provide it for everyone for a season like he brings you these specialists that come in help you with the borehole help you with the irrigation mm -hmm. help you with all this and now macadamia nuts i mean this is huge it's just really it's just neat to see and the that. chickens i mean it's it was like the chickens weren't laying I don't know anything about chickens. I went to the Whole Foods and bought this little chicken magazine. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cute. And, and but I've, I've had to like research and like the chickens, the, our flock size should be laying like 282 eggs a week. And we weren't getting anything near that. And I was like, you know, what do we do? What's wrong? And I'm like, Richard, you need to fix this. And because uh, that's your income, you know, that's your income. It's not my income. Right. And, he found a chicken veterinarian who came to the farm. We, we just had to pay him like $20 transportation to come to the farm. And he looked and he like diagnosed the, the issue. I mean, it's just, you know, to have somebody do that and for not a lot of money. And that's the other thing you would ask, like what some of the things that we talked about that, but this is the other piece, Richard, only makes $185 a month mm. for that level of work, dedication, and responsibility, and trusted stewardship. When I send money there to buy supplies, to pay wages, he goes and he gets that money and never has a penny ever been missing or mm something that I sent it for not been taken care of. Wow. That's a lot of trust when you're making 185 and you're picking up 800 to do mm -hmm. X and Y and Z, right. you know? And um, so I really want to increase his wage. And it's just not a lot compared to our life. I mean, you know, $250 a month is just not a lot. So I want to be able to increase his salary and, it's, it's really interesting. We talked about the people coming on and rolling up. Now there's another person that we have on the um, project and he just doesn't have that, that vision. He right. doesn't have that God core. So even though he's there and he works, mm -hmm. it's just not that same. So I'm waiting to see when God helps him to, right. to move along. Um, but it, Richard has that core. How cool is that? Oh yeah, that's just so sweet hearing these stories. And I could talk to you all day long. I just, uh, and we have, we've talked quite a bit before this recording. <laughs> so it's, it's really good. And by the way, I don't, don't know if I mentioned the day, this is, this is going to be airing on Friday, June 21st. But before I end, is there any initiatives you're going forward that you're really feeling like, okay, the I feel the Lord's calling me to next that we can share with our viewers. And if they feel led to support you, we'll share your information where they can support you. But any initiatives that you feel like, Okay, this is, I feel like, the next step. Yes. So we uh, did the borehole, as you know. We got the water tanks, and that was, like, great. The next step is we need to have uh, sanitation for indoor plumbing. The I, I shared with you how the health inspector came, because right now they are living in uh, shacks, basically lean-to shacks, and they are using an out, um, outhouse and an out, mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. outhouse structure to use rainwater and buckets mm -hmm. to, to bathe in. And so we really need to have um, sanitation, mm -hmm. Uh, indoor plumbing and permanent housing right and those are the big initiatives that um, I've been trying I've been praying to the Lord I don't know I I don't know what he's doing with me that he's re you know made it so that my resources have been reduced and I've need right. to focus on uh, my son and some other things so I don't know what that means but I know that I hear to do this it needs to get done the Lord knows he needs it. I mean, you right. know, 
they need permanent housing. They Amen. need a roof. They don't need to live in a shack on concrete floors anymore. Amen. And that's, and I believe he's giving you that he's going to provide as he has so faithfully these past four years that he will continue to provide for you. So if you you're watching this and you feel like, Oh, I really want to help. You're looking at between 20 and maybe 30 or $40,000 to build these houses and to build the Senate. Do you get them? Clean sanitation, sanitation for, yes. For the workers and for the, the people that are living there on the farm, you can go to uh, www.zimfarmproject.org. That's again, Z I M F A R M project, P R O J E C T dot org. So <laughs> zimfarmproject.org. I'll put that on the bottom of the notes of all these social media posts. You can just click on that if you're feeling, you're listening to this and going, wow, I, what was that again? You can just go to her, go to Ayana's website and, and just help and make any donations. You just so see fit because it is an act of faith of just stepping out. I remember the Lord told me, I want you to focus and promote other people and the people walking by faith and not sight, just like you are. So that's what I'm doing for you. And I just pray the Lord blesses you. But so before I end, is, is there anything else you'd like to add before I pray and and um, just that I, I also about the Facebook page, I think right. um, a lot of people, they, you know, a website, whatever, whatever, but a lot, billions of people use Facebook. And so mm -hmm. if they can go and, and visit the Facebook page and follow us, you know, slowly but surely we're increasing, God is increasing our following. And um, if they can, that will be a good way for them to see that we are truly walking and walking it out and not just talking because the you know sometimes seeing is the evidence i have to walk by faith and by the unseen but people who would like to support me they can look and see what we've done and where we're going and what the need is and that's uh, facebook.com and you can just search for Zimbabwe Farm Project and find that. And I'll post that in the bottom too, as well, all those links. And I, I just want to encourage you. Well done. You're, it's just so neat to see what God's done with your, just your, your seed. This is your seed. He's given you your talent that he's given you and how you've just three to 400 people now have jobs. And again, you're, you're changing the generational trajectory of so many people's lives. And as your friend and as a person that loves you, it's just, like I'm your little cheerleader. Yay. You know. <laughs> so, Go Kim. Yeah, Go no. Kim. Pray so God. I know. Pray God. <laughs> so before I close, I'm just going to pray us out. And uh, thank you all for joining in and just, just touching base with us. So I'm just going to pray and then I'll stop the recording. Dear Lord, I thank you so much for Ayana and this heart you've given her just to walk in a manner worthy and walk by faith, not by sight and in obedience. Lord, bless the fruit of our hands. I pray, Lord, that these initiatives for permanent housing and for sanitation would be met, that you would meet them in Jesus' name, and you would bless her and all of her endeavors, and Richard, who's there on the ground, that you would just use other people, that they would be able to experience your blessing as well, not just her, but other people. So I just pray this all in Jesus' name as she just lifts her gaze to you, her Lord, her Savior and her King and her provider. I pray this all in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, lady. Love you. Thank you so much for jumping in and joining us today. You're awesome. Love you. <laughs>